back to the side of the stage and was like, all right, um, why don't we start off by just telling me about the new app? Uh, that's the worst question that I have to start with this early in the morning. Um, it's just a bunch of songs, you know? I mean, so far, which is, I guess, where we always start. Yeah. We sit in a little room rehearsing and turn out 15 or 20 things. And, you know, I, I think we had a pretty clear idea where we're going with this, that we wanted to be a little bit more Baroque, and less maybe guitar-oriented, but it didn't even start to take shape until, you know, a month into the, the sessions. I mean, it was just a bunch of songs. We had no idea where they were going, which is, is really good. I mean, it's it's kind of nice not to know what you're doing. Is there any one song or two songs that really stand out for you? Um, I like Losing My Religion. I like the lyrics a lot. And I just like, kind of like that feel. It's got that kind of mid-70s California rock groove. <laughs> um, also, I get to play mandolin on it. So you know, I kind of enjoy playing mandolin a little bit more than playing guitar nowadays. Um, probably because I'm getting almost competent on guitar. And, and to switch over to something that I'm still incompetent on is a really good thing. OK, we'll talk more about that later on. <laughs> Um, you had a long break between records. Uh, how, do you th how do you think that um, affected what you wrote? Well, I think very much because we, since we, we spent a whole year on the road, we had a million ideas when we went in to rehearse. And we, we started rehearsing a little earlier than we were supposed to. We came up with 10 songs immediately. So we had like a fairly large range of material. Um, and since we knew we weren't going to tour this time, and we knew the being on the road and playing as a four-piece rock and roll band had gotten kind of tiresome that year. It was, for us, we kind of switched around and changed instruments a lot. And also wrote kind of sitting in a circle with acoustic guitars. So that up until the time we started recording the record, we only had about three or four songs with drums. As we started recording, Bill played a few more drums and more percussion stuff. But originally, almost everything was just you know keyboards, one guitar, bass, and uh, maybe a conga or something. Um, I, I I was listening to the interview last night. I, I, find, I found it interesting that you, what you said about considering yourself a rhythm guitarist, which I had never really thought of, but then it made sense. And yet there's no, typically there would be a lead guitarist to play off of. Um, how, how, does, how do you feel about that, that part in the band, you know what I mean? Well, it's fine. You know, a rhythm guitar player, I, don't know, I just saw this TV show. It was about uh, Air Force carriers. And every one they interviewed, from the guy who cleaned the toilets to the guy who flew the planes, said that his job was the most important on their, uh, the carrier because they can't take off without clean toilets. You know, And in that respect, being a rhythm guitar player is really important. You know, it's not, People don't listen to it much. I, it's there, and it drives the song. Um, also, whenever someone, usually not me, suggests that there be a solo on a song, Mike always goes, well, what am I going to do, dance? You know, I mean, it is kind of. I get really tired of seeing bands where they do a long solo and the singer does a little interpretive terpsichorean thing to, to show where the guitar solo is. You know, I, I've never been interested in doing solos, really. You know, I'd rather write a good song. And if I was a great soloist, I'd probably play solos more often, but I'm not. And that's fine with me. Um, from, from the one I love to stand, which were both kind of, you know, quote unquote hits, um, they're, they're still like very far out of the mainstream of what top ten is considered. And I think this new record continues that like by ten times. Why do you think that is? You know, I, when we started out, all of our friends said, "Well, gee, you guys are really commercial because all of our friends were in bands that had, you know, like people that had never played an instrument at all and were really noisy and real. You know, they thought they were real avant-garde, which some were and some weren't. Some were just kind of sloppy. But I, you know, I always kind of felt like, well, gee, I, our stuff, I could see it on the radio. I mean, I never thought it would get there, but I, yeah." You know, I listen to our records and go, well, it's not any weirder than Prince. It's a lot weirder than Hart, but, you know, Hart makes good records. Who cares? I mean, there's a place for everything. And, and I don't really, really think about how many people are going to listen to it or, you know, or what the mainstream is, because by and large, I don't listen to the mainstream anyway. You know? um, to a certain extent, your work with Mitch Easter in way back kind of helped define your early sound, jangly guitars, et cetera. And I think uh, Scott is kind of defined. Scott's your work with Scott is defining a later period. Is there is there a way you could? Okay, we were just we had just talked about Mitch, early days, and Scott now, and and I I, I guess I'd ask you to kind of define, you know, not in specific terms, but how you feel it. I don't know the Scott lit sound. That's what it is. Yeah. The sound of Scott at work. Um, 
I don't know. We learned a lot from Mitch and Don when we started out. And, you know, and since we've gone off here, I, I have no idea where we're going. I can't even really look back on the records. I hate to say that it sounds like a real cop out, but I just I don't even think about it when they're gone. I mean, I kind of noticed that this one is, has less guitar than the last couple, and that's by design, you know. Um, Scott's real good at like, keeping our energy level high, which is nice. I mean, there have been records we've done where we, our energy level isn't real high, or you get real, well, it's good enough, you know. Scott mm -hmm. never settles for good enough, which is nice, because I'm lazy. I tend to, I kind of like to do it once, and, and if it's pretty good once, then I leave, you know. Although, sometimes it's better the first time. You just have to learn when, you know. Right. So I don't, know, it's, I don't know. I guess that's the main thing that Scott does for us is, is keep us up, and you know he's always got one more idea, good or bad, you know. Um, when Green came out, or right before it came out, you said that you thought it was the best thing you'd ever done. Does, does the new album top that? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone always says their new album is the best they've ever done. I, so far, I like the songs better. Um, it's really hard to tell until you mix them, and we've still got plenty of time yet to screw it up. I mean, <laughs> this could be our worst record if we. You don't like to think about that. Um, it's, yeah, I think the material's better. And I think it'll be really interesting. It's kind of, it's a little different. You know, I think that maybe people will be surprised when they hear it. It's, ex it's really exciting record. Um, you're, you kind of have a famous quote about uh, feeling like you've never made a great record. Um, do you feel like that, do you, do you remember that quote? And does oh, that sure. Put, is well, that a pressure? In any way? No, it doesn't put any pressure on me at all. You know, you've got to measure yourself against the best. I mean, who, you know, who wants to be measured against the mediocre ones? You know, I'd like to make a pretty good record. Well, the, you know, if you enter with that kind of mind, who wants to make that record at all? You know, I, I, just, I always think of the best records that I've ever heard, and you know, we probably haven't made one that good, at least in my mind, because I don't know. I never listen to our records. I mean, I'd rather listen to Astral Weeks or or What's Going On or almost any Al Green album. You know. Or the new Public Enemy record, I guess. Um, now we haven't. I don't think we've done it yet. So there's. I mean, if I thought we had, you probably might as well just retire. You know, this is the best we could do, and it's a great record. We'll go home. I mean, I think Van Morrison. A lot of people have had trouble coping with, you know, making the best record of all time. Right. What to do then? Um, where do you feel like the band is at right now, 1990? Um, I don't know. Backing into the 90s as usual. You know, we're not. I, I as a band, we're working together really well. You know. And we've got a lot of time to do other stuff on our own, too, which is really nice. You were telling me about the baseball player cliche uh, thing on TV the other day. You oh, have any yeah. I was, Mike always watches uh, the sports network thing. I, yeah. I mean, and we lived together. We were making the first part of the record. So I go downstairs, and he's watching it. And they had some baseball player who had a list of cliches. And every time he asked me a question, he'd just point to it and say, well, this year I just want to play the game well. You know? So of course, I guess the, the rock and roll cliches are the band's tighter than it's ever been. This is our best record ever. I don't know what else. I must have said about five or six other ones already, so. OK, we'll just insert them now. We'll, we'll just go back and put yeah, them in. Yeah, yeah, and so just, you know, 17. It's like the, the tour jokes. We toured with 10,000 Maniacs. All the guys in the band had been on the road so long that they didn't even have jokes anymore. They just had numbers. Like number six was, was I don't guess you can say what number six was. But you know, they, it was pretty great. So you'd walk in the room, and it'd be like, 14, three, man. You know, and you go, yep. All right. Uh, I guess that's it, is, is, unless there's something that I haven't asked you about. I can't think of anything. I feel kind of subnormal. <laughs> I haven't talked, uh, you know, I hate being on camera anyway. I haven't talked on camera in a year or something. So I'm kind of. All right. Well, thanks for um, sure. letting us do it today. <laughs>